Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is falling distance. Now when an object is falling because of gravity, the following formula can be used to determine the distance the object falls in a specific time period. Now d is equal to half g t squared. Now t is squared, okay, not, not everything else. It's just t that's squared. I couldn't find like a square over here, so I had to do that. Now the variables in the formula are as follows. D is the distance in, meet, in meters, right? G is 9.8 and T is the amount of time in seconds that the object has been fallen. Write a function named falling distance that, that accepts an object's falling distance in seconds as an argument. The function should return the distance in meters that the object has fallen during that time interval. Now write a program that calls the function in a loop that passes the values one through 10 as argument and displays the return value. Okay. So we've been given a formula over here, and we're going to create a function to basically calculate the falling distance. And then we're going to create a loop. It's going to, that's going to iterate 10 times, calculating the falling distance from second one to 10, okay? So let's go ahead and start defining the function, right? So this function, the purpose of this function is to return the falling distance given the time, right? I, I believe that's what it said over here. Write a program that calls, well, let's see over here, it says, write a function named falling distance, okay, that accepts an object falling time in seconds as an argument. So let's do that. Let's define a function called falling underscore distance, and it accepts an argument called, oh, sorry, it accepts an argument, let's see, okay, so, Right? A function named falling distance that accepts an argument falling time in seconds as an argument. Right? Okay, okay, okay. So we know that it's falling time. So it's going to accept the time as an argument. So we can say we can define a, a parameter for falling time. Since it's, it's accepting an argument, which is the falling time, let's define a parameter and call it falling time, right? And then we can basically use that value to calculate the fall the falling distance and then return it. Um yeah. So we can just basically create that formula in the function. Let's create a variable called distance to represent the distance that's going to you know, be calculated and returned. So let's call it distance. Distance is equal to, now half is one divided by two. So one divided by two. Let me surround it with parentheses so that it's clear that, so that, so that calculation happens first, right? We are following order of operations. And then we are multiplying by gravity it tells us over here that g is 9.8. So we are multiplying by 9.8. We can actually create a variable um, in the function and say g, well, g is going to be always constant, right? 9.8, well, on, um, on Earth, right, on Earth. So g is equal to, we can call it gravity, actually. Gravity is equal to 9.8. And over here, we can multiply by g, which is gravity. And then it's being multiplied by t squared. Now t in this case is going to be our fallen time, right? So you're multiplying by fallen time squared. Now fallen time squared is fallen time exponent two. And the way we can do that in Python, one way we can do that is by, by using two asterisks and saying two, meaning fallen time exponent two. This means an exponent, right? Raised to the power two. So falling time exponent two. Now we want that to also happen on its own, right? So let's surround that with parentheses, although it's still, it might still, it might still work, but we want this to happen you know, kind of separately. Falling time exponent two, we want this to happen. So, um, so basically with this value, this the value of this calculation, the half times the gravity times the value of this calculation here. And that should give us our falling time. Um, now there's no way for me to verify, we're just, we just creating the formula based on this, right? If it's wrong, just, just change it around. But I'm confident this is correct. Okay, so now that we, now if once we found our distance, all we have to do is just go ahead and return it. Let's go ahead and return a distance so we can receive it on the other end when we call it. So once you found distance, return distance. Now we're done with our falling time function, right? Okay, so over here it says the function to return the distance in meters. We've done that. That object has fallen during that, that time interval. Write a program that calls the function in a loop that passes the values 
1 through 10 as an argument and displays a return value. Now let's go ahead and define a main method, right? Now a main method is the function that sh you should call when you, when you run the program for the first time, right? The main method is your starting point. It's, it's your program, pretty much. It calls every other function, right? It, it's going to call the following distance function. That's where your program is going to run, pretty much, right? And it's, it's good, it's, it's convention. It's like uh, in most program languages, the main method is your starting point, and it's where you basically write your program. It's a function that calls all, all of the functions, pretty much, right? So you should do that. Create the main, main function, and that's where we should, write, we should write our program. Let's do that over here. It says we should create a loop over here. Write, a, write, a, write, the program, write a program that, ca that calls a function in a loop that passes the values 1 through 10 as arguments and displays a return value. Right? So let's go ahead, go ahead and create a loop that iterates 10 times, starting from 1 to 10. Right, so we can create um, a variable, a for loop, right? And then our target variable, let's create the target variable and call it um, current time. Current time is going to tr keep track of our current time starting from 1 to 10, right? So for current time in range, we're going to specify a range that this current time should start and end, or starts and, 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 and get to an end. So we are saying current time should start from 1 all the way to 10. I'm typing in 11, right, because this this range basically here, over here is basically creating a range from 1 to 10. Why? Because the, this 1 is always your starting point. That's ex the exact number that it starts at 1. But 11, the, your, ending, your ending value over here, okay, is not included. So it's 1 less than the ending value. So basically 1, 11 creates a range from 1 to 10. If I want to range, if I type in 10 here, it would actually create a range from 1 to 9. And I don't want that. I want to range from 1 to 10, meaning I trade 10 times and not 9 times, right? So I have, to, I have to type in 1 more than the ending range, really. So it's going to be 1 to 11, which gives me a range from 1 to 10. So current time initially is going to be 1. It's going to do what's in the loop. And then it's going to increase to 2. It's going to do what's in the loop, increase to 3, all the way to 10. And then do what's in the loop. So yes. All right, so now current time references the, you know, these values, right, from 1 to 10. And then we can call the fallen distance function underscore distance well I'm not really used to the well no you it's fine you can, you can well you're just fill in the question right but I'm going to change this to camo case and right you can keep yours the same or you can change it too I like to just you know use camo case and I'm just going to capitalize the first letter of each word except the first word right the first word stays the first letter of the first word stays the same but then any word after that, the first letter is going to be capitalized. That's common casing. So falling distance, but you can change. It's just the name of it, right? So now let's call falling distance, and then pass in current time, right? Current time is going to start from one to ten. So it, this we know this range is going to this loop is going to iterate ten times from one to ten, and then current time is going to keep track of that variable of, of, from one to ten. So falling time is going to calculate. So falling distance is going to calculate the distance for this particular current time of 1. The next time I trade following distance is going to calculate the, the distance for the current time of 2, all the way to 10, right? Now over here we were just returning the distance. Over here it says write a program that calls a function in a loop that passes the values 1 through 10 as arguments and displays a return value. Displays it. Now the way it, it's just returning it, right? It's not really displaying it. So we have to go ahead and display it. So we can use a print function to return whatever value is being returned, sorry, we can use a print function to print whatever value is being returned by the following distance function. So that, that's all we're doing. And by default, the print function ends with a new line character, meaning after it prints something, it moves the position from where it's at from the end of the line to the next line. So anything that comes after it is displayed on that next line. Now, because we are calling the because we are calling the print function multiple times. They're all going to be separated, um, or or this, yeah. They're all going to be um, uh, kind of separated on a new line, right? Because after each one, the print function always takes the position from the end of the line to the next line. Anything that comes after that, it's going to be displayed on that next line. So the print function gets called each time, and each time it takes the position from the end of the line to the next line. So anytime it gets called again, the output is displayed on that next line, on that on that next line, right? So. We are pretty much done with the functions, right? We, we will need a header to you know, probably organize things and display things well, but for now, let's just see how this, how this is playing. We created two functions here, 
We've only we've only defined them, right? We haven't called anything. So when we run this program, nothing is really going to happen. We know the main function is what's running the entire program. The main function is what's actually calling the following. That's what's actually running the program, right? So we need to call it. Since it's, it has everything, we need to go ahead and call the main method. So if we, if we don't call it, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and call the main method this way. Now we're just calling it, right? And let's save this where we save our Python programs. 